In this lesson, we're going to talk about the Content Aware Scale tool. So keeping in mind what Content Aware means. So essentially, Photoshop is aware of certain bits of content, and it's going to use its built-in intelligence to make it so it's going to scale according to what it finds there. Now, sometimes it'll overdo it, so we're going to see how we can fix that. But many times, especially with backgrounds like this that are kind of like repetitive and don't really have like an edge to it, it does a really nice job. If you just have like a plain background or a sky, you know, something like that, it's very smart to be able to be aware of that content. All right, so my client in this case would like to extend out this table to have a little bit of room for their logo. Okay, so what I need to do first of all is make it so I have that room already set up. Okay, so let me go ahead and just zoom out a little bit. I'm going to zoom out and then I'm going to go over here to my crop tool and that's going to be living over here. And now all I'm going to do now is just simply click and drag to the right because I know this is where I want it to be extended out. And you can see, bam, just like that, I've used the crop tool to extend out my canvas, which is really nice. So click on that and now bam, I have this little space here for this table to grow outward. So let's go ahead and see what we can do with our Content Aware Scale tool. Now where does that live? It lives inside of the Edit menu and we have here Content Aware Scale. Now if yours is grayed out or something like that, it either means that your layer is not selected or it means that your layer is locked. So make sure you have all that taken care of before you go ahead and select this. And you can see, just like that now, I have the ability to then start to scale this. All right, and I can scale it in any different way, making the height and the width bigger, whatever you want, smaller, etc. But what I'm gonna do now is just go ahead and bring this out. And let's just see what it does. Click and drag out. You can see how it's pretty smart the way that it's doing this, right? You see how it's actually extending the whole thing out. And just notice the table. See that it's doing a pretty good job of that, right? It's extending out all the wood and all the grains and everything like that. And it's bringing in its algorithm. But a lot of you probably noticed already that the spoon is getting a little bit warped, my table, like my plate is getting a little bit warped. A few other things are really like not totally cooperating. So depending on what you want to do, this could be exactly what you want. But in this case, it's not perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just click on my little circle slash and show you what we can do to make this so it's going to be what we want it to do. All right, so let's go back to our Content Aware tool. All right, let's go over to here to edit, content aware scale. And now what we want to do is use this protect option. Okay, because notice here it says protect, protect none. Oh, that's pretty scary. So if I click on the drop down, it still says none. We now have to work with something that's going to sound a little fancy, but really I'm just going to show you how easy it is to do. Just follow these steps. Don't worry about these kind of like fancy key terms or new panels we're going to be working with. So in order to do this, we need to go over to here to window and bring up something called our channels panel. All right, so I'm going to bring this up and you're going to see here I have these four channels. All right, we don't really need even need to really understand about panels at this point. We just need to understand what we need to do in order to get Photoshop to see what we want to protect in there. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is just use the regular old lasso tool, believe it or not. And you're going to essentially say, hey, I want to protect this. I want to protect this everything inside here you don't have to be perfect but you want to be relatively close you don't want to get any like too much extra information come over to here and now we have this nice closed loop and now guess what we're gonna go over to here to this little icon right there to make a mask for that you can see there's your little alpha right there okay you can rename that if you want to we're gonna keep it just like that for right now Okay, so now let's come back to our Layers panel, make sure that Layer 0 is selected. And now we're going to go back to Content to Wear Scale. And now what we're going to do is going to, we're going to sort of like chip away at it, because you're going to see it's going to do a pretty good job, but occasionally it's going to kind of be exhausted by certain elements that it may see. Because if we look back at what we had selected, you can see that it may be picking up on other kind of nuances like shadows and stuff like that. All right, but we're going to see what we can do here. I'm going to just click and drag across here. You can see it's going to do a pretty good job. But some of you may notice that like, if you go too far, right, you can see how it's getting a little bit warped there. Right? Do you see that? If you keep your eye on the spoon there, you can see it's getting a little bit warped. So it got a little bit greedy. So it's not a big deal. All you do is just basically rinse and repeat. I'm just going to stop what I've done here, kind of quit while I'm ahead. I'm going to click on my little checkbox. Go back and do it again. Edit. 
content to our scale do a little bit more so it kind of starts over again and notice bam wait for it to kind of maybe kind of start to spread out a little bit too much there no big deal hit the check mark come back and just basically rinse and repeat like I said and you can get kind of greedy and just see how far you go all right spoon got a little bit warped no big deal but the backgrounds looking pretty good let's do it a few more times until you get there and I'm gonna get pretty greedy here and excellent super happy with that okay now I have the ability to then have a little space for this now if you're finding that like some of the stuff is not looking how you want it to look for example if you see some of these little artifacts there you can always use the content to wear fill tool like if you're not familiar with that I'll just go ahead and show you that really quickly you just say hey listen you know what I don't really like all that kind of weird stuff there maybe it has some weird artifacts you go over here to edit content to wear fill and you're going to see how it found all that there. It's going to give me a nice little preview of what's there. Okay, and then I'm just going to go ahead and just say OK. And now you're going to see it got rid of that, deselect it, and now you're good. Okay, beautiful. And now finally, I'll just go ahead and bring in that image that's supposed to be there from my client so we can see. Beautiful, that's going to be our logo right there. So everybody is happy now we've had a nice little addendum to what we had before just using our table as a nice little backdrop that didn't exist prior to this all right so it takes a little bit of practice a little bit of nuance and again understanding something that's a little bit different than maybe you've worked with before working with channels channels has many many purposes this is just one example because this particular tool it relies on channels to be able to isolate that part so it knows not to affect it all right so practice that have fun enjoy it see what you can do on your own with your other projects and we'll see you in the next lesson if you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.